class, welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom, and in this video, what we're gonna look at is an example of integration by parts. And so I have our formula up here, boxed in blue for us to kind of use um, to help us uh, go through these processes. So here on the by parts formula, we have the integral of u times v prime dx, that will be equal to u times v minus the integral of u prime v dx. Okay, so that must mean I need to figure out what the u is and what the v is in our problem. All right, so if I kind of compare our integrand x times sine x here with the formula, technically speaking, the first component here should be matched up with the u in my problem. The second component or the second function sine x will be matched up with my v prime. If I can do that kind of matching here and identify what the u's and the v primes and subsequent v's are from there, I can fill in the rest of this part of the formula. So that's gonna be our first plan of attack. So we're going to start here by letting our x b our u. So let's say u is equal to x, and that's gonna mean that our u prime, because we also a little bit later need to know what the u prime is, let's let our u prime be, well, the derivative of x here, which is a lovely one in that case. Now you notice, again, this is not the same u as we would have in like a u substitution type problem. u is just a standard kind of placeholder for us. Nice letter to use because it's not a common letter that we would use mostly in our, um, in our problems to begin with. So u is gonna be x, derivative of u is the derivative of x. So we've got that part done. But the second part here, this sine x, will be matched up with our v prime. So I'm gonna write this here, that v prime is our sine x, okay? Now I have to think and imagine, well, if v prime is sine x, what is v? So unlike on the left side in the green writing here, when I moved down, I took the derivative, but notice how I stack this a little differently. I already put what the derivative function was, sine x, because we're matching up to kind of match the form of the formula that's here and letting sine x be that v prime. So if that's the case and I move vertically up, now I have to integrate. So I have to think of what is the antiderivative of sine x so that I know what v is. So I have to think about what is that function that I would take its derivative of to get me sine x. Well, you might say, well, that could be cosine of x. Let me pause and let's just check ourselves. Is the derivative of cosine just sine x? Oh no, it's not, it's negative sine x. So in order for me to find the antiderivative of sine x, for that to be in sync, I have to have a negative cosine x, that's here. Okay, so again, if I took the derivative of just plain cosine x, I'd get negative sine x. So to negate that again, I start with a negative in the beginning. All right, I organized my work in this way for um, a reason, and that was I want to make sure that when I work vertically, I have the u and its derivative stacked here, and then subsequently the v and the v prime stacked over here separately. Now I'm going to go back to my problem and follow along with the formula. If I'm imagining that the problem given to me, x integral of x times sine x dx, is of this form, integral of a u times a v prime dx, then I can continue on with the rest of the formula. And I can say that then this is equal to u times v. Well, here's my u and here's my v. We can multiply those pieces together, the u times the v. Well, I don't actually want to use the u's and the v's. That's just in the formula to help me here. What I want to use is what the u and the v actually are equal to. So that's an x times a negative cosine x, the negative out in front of that. So we have negative x cosine of x. So that's my u times my v, this piece times this piece. Then carry on with the formula. I will subtract off the integral of the u prime times the v. Well, here's my u prime. Oh, it's a wonderful u prime. It's just one, that's wonderful times the v, which is negative cosine x. So it's this piece 
times that piece. So I have one times a negative cosine x, so that's just negative cosine x dx, stealing the dx from the formula. So you can kind of see how this feels very different than we had seen before in the previous examples with u substitution. This one is like very formula driven, if you will, in terms of the integration technique used, the by parts formula itself provides a structure for how we kind of put things in place. Well, we're not done. We're not done because what I have as my initial problem equal to this piece over here, well, that still involves an integral and I need to take care of that. At least this part here is done, but I now need to tackle this part. One thing I wanna notice, I have a negative here. That's technically a negative one in front of the cosine X. We can bring that out in front, treat it like a constant, which it really is. And then I would then multiply by the negative that's already here. So I'm gonna do that just to clean things up. So I have, this is equal to negative X cosine X. When I bring this out, I now have plus, but still the integral cosine X dx, because I haven't dealt with the integral of cosine x dx just yet. All right, I would be done if I just knew what the integral of cosine x is. Well, I think I do. If you can imagine, um, I have this, this is equal to negative x cosine x plus, and just think, what is the antiderivative of just cosine x? It is the function that if I took its derivative, I would get exactly cosine x. Well, would that be sine x? So if I put sine x here, and let's just check ourselves. If I take the derivative of sine x, do I get cosine x? Yes, I do. So the derivative of sine x is cosine x, and thus the integral of cosine x is exactly sine of x. Now, because I had an indefinite integral to begin with, with no boundaries, I still have to do my plus C here on the end of that as the constant, um, since we don't know what the boundaries, the boundary values are. And so this is now my actual um, integral using by parts to help figure out what that integral would be. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this video. In my next video, I'll show you another example of a by parts problem. Please click on the Advantage logo at the bottom to subscribe to our channel. Thanks.